Hello everyone. So this is the week where we start putting together our pattern pieces and assembling them to make a hat. If you're looking at the directions, you'll probably see that there is some sewing, but in regards to the overall scheme of the project, I personally feel that sewing is not the focus, but rather all the prep work that it takes to actually get to sewing. So in this clip, I am pinning the lining pieces that I had cut from last week. And for me, pinning everything carefully is a large part of the success into making sure that your hat is sewn well. In this clip, I am pinning the sides of the hat to the center piece. And I've sped up the following footage so that it's faster, but I actually spent quite a bit of time to pin everything accurately so that when it came to sewing, it would be even. There will be some places where it's pretty curved, so if you're having a challenge with pinning everything flat, you can always go in and snip part of the seam allowance so that it fits a little bit better into the curve of the hat. So over here, I am pinning the second side piece to the center. And as previously mentioned, it just takes a lot of time and care to make sure that you pin everything neatly so that when you actually get to the sewing, everything goes up pretty smoothly. I realized when I made some of my previous samples, when I didn't take the time to carefully pin, there were some, some parts of the fabric that overlapped and folded over, so I would have to pick out the stitches and then re-sew them. So like I said, carefully pinning ensures a really good sewing result. So in this clip, I actually have some ear options and you can either make it out of the same outer fabric or you can cut the felt to do the inside of the ears or you can actually use the lining fabric. I personally chose to use the felt because I like how it gave it some shape and structure in the end result once the ears were sewn together. As with the main pieces of the lining, we want to make sure that we pin everything carefully so that when we sew it, it will be sewn neatly and with accuracy. Once you're done pinning everything, you want to sew on the outer edges where your seam allowance is for both the ears and the lining. Once you sew all of the edges, then you want to go ahead and trim any excess threads and clip the curves. I ended up clipping my curves, even though the pattern doesn't mention it, just because I like for my ear pieces to lie a lot flatter. So I went ahead and did this to both of my ear pieces. You'll see that I start making multiple V-shaped cuts inside the felt part of the ear so that we can clip that curve and make sure everything lies flat and neatly. And I end up clipping the curve on the faux fur side by making small snips as to not cut into the ply of the fabric. From here, I also trim down some of the felt so that there is less bulk in the seam allowance. Then I turn the ears right side out and pick out the fur in the seam allowance so that it's not caught inside the sewn seam. Here I am finger pressing the ear. You can also use a cool iron or hot iron depending on what fabrics you're using to press it. You can see how three-dimensional the ear looks once you end up sewing it at the bottom. Further down in the video I will explain if you want to sew the ear into the seam of the hat but if you don't and you want to sew them on on the outside you just sew the bottom of the ear to complete it. In this clip, if you choose to sew the ear into the seam allowance, this is where it will be positioned. You'll want to find the markings for where the ears are to be positioned, and the ear will actually be sewn into that seam when you sew the outer pieces together. Now we start pinning the outer main fabric, which would be the faux fur. As with the lining, you want to take the time to carefully pin so that when you're sewing it, you'll be able to sew for accuracy. Okay. 
here I'll be continuing the demonstration of where the ears will go if you want to sew it inside the main outer body fabric. So I've already pinned everything and then I am positioning the ear inside the opening so you can see what it looks like. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that the ear is in the proper position so that when the hat is turned right side out, you'll see that the ears actually stand up. Make sure that you don't sew in and pin the ears down so that it's inverted the opposite way. When you pin the ear to fit inside the opening, you'll notice that it's probably very thick. So here I ended up putting pins through the first half of the ear, but you can also use sewing clips. I don't have any sewing clips, but it'll work fine with pins provided that you don't stick the pin through all four layers. So just be careful about that so that when you actually sew, it doesn't shift. Once you've finished pinning the ear into place, I pin the rest of the side of the hat to the center. And then I repeat it for the other side. Here we have the lining sewn together as well as the outer main fabric which is the faux fur. As with the inside ear pieces you can see that there are a lot of curves so even though the pattern directions don't include this I go ahead and clip the curves. You can make a snip but I typically prefer a nice v-notch so I do that with the lining piece. Once you're done clipping the curves, you can finger press the seams open or you can place the hat onto a tailor's hand and press the seams open using your iron. For the faux fur side of the hat, I end up clipping the curves with small little cuts instead of a V-notch so that I don't cut the fur pile. So once the lining and the outer faux fur fabric are sewn, you want to turn the lining right side out and then match it right side together with the faux fur piece. And as with the pinning for the other parts of the hat, I find that that's the most critical part of making these hats. So I spent quite a bit of time to accurately pin everything together so that when I sewed it in the end, it would be nice and neat without much shifting or excess fabric that somehow didn't align up in the end. And once you're done pinning, you want to sew around the outside edges of the hat and make sure that you leave an opening to turn the hat out. As you can see, I finished sewing around the outside edges of the hat and left a spot of it open so I can turn it. So right now I'm going in and trimming off some of the excess seam allowance so that the hat lies a little bit flatter and neater. So again, this is up to you if you want to do that, but it's not required by any means. So once I'm done trimming off the excess allowance, I start turning the hat. And you want to make sure that you leave enough space to turn. I think I actually left a little bit too little, so it was a little bit more challenging for me to actually turn this hat. 
But again, do whatever you're comfortable with. Bigger the gap to turn, the more hand sewing you have to do to stitch up the closing. But on the plus side, it makes it far much easier to turn. I use humostats to help turn out the longer pieces of where the hat will close. And if you have smaller, daintier fingers that can pull it out, that works just as fine. But for me, it was easier to reach in there and get everything to turn nicely by using my humostats. And once I am done pulling out what I can, I want it to be a little bit neater around the edges. So I go in with a knitting needle and I poke out the corners. Once you have everything turned out nice and neatly and all the corners poked out, I go in with my seam ripper just to make sure I can pull out the fur that was caught in the seam allowance just to make sure that the hat looks full around the edges. And I do this around the entire perimeter of the hat. And once that's done, we want to go ahead and hand sew the opening closed. When I sew the opening shut, I use a ladder stitch and you can also use a whip stitch if you like. The whip stitch is a little bit more visible. The ladder stitch, it's definitely less visible to the eye. And Marika has directions in her pattern as to how you would sew the ladder stitch. Or you can always Google it for a demonstration. But I sped up the footage, but you can see an idea of what I'm doing. You essentially run your needle through the top fabric a little bit, and then you go back down directly underneath and catch the fabric um, from the bottom fabric, and you repeat. So once you're done sewing the opening closed, I go in with my seam ripper and pick out any additional faux fur that was caught in the seam allowance of the hat. And I'm doing the like the side seams where it meets the center and I pick all those out so the hat looks nice and full instead of flat in those areas. If you did not sew the ears into the seam of the outer main fabric, then you will sew the ears on in the position marked on the pattern piece here once the hat has been assembled. Everybody, I am pleased to say we are almost done making our hat. So here I marked where the snaps will go. So I picked two snaps just so that everything is flush and tight to the head and I marked them on the lining. I won't sew all the snaps in on the lining side, but it's hard to see on the faux fur side. But that tells me where I need to put my snaps when I sew. So I've sped up the footage here because we all know that sewing snaps can be a little bit dull and boring, but Doing it neatly and doing it securely will make sure that the snaps stay in place so you don't have to sew them back on and that the hat stays attached to the blithe's head. So for me, if you chose a lining fabric that is probably a looser weave or something that might tear easily, I would recommend putting in some fabric or interfacing so that the snap doesn't pull out of the fabric. But again, that's up to you, but those are just small little tricks to help reinforce um, some of the sewing that we're doing. So I showed the two snaps that go on the outside, but I also placed two snaps on the inside, but it's the same process. So snaps were the recommended way to close your hat, but you can also use buttons and loop closures. And I hope to film a separate video of the other samples that I made to show you what I did to alter the pattern but you can use those as well. Don't feel like you have to use snaps. There's definitely multiple ways you can close a hat. If you really don't want to sew snaps on, you can also use Velcro. There's no harm in that as well. So use whatever closure that you're comfortable with sewing on.
I finished adding the two remaining snaps and you can see how the hat looks once you finish that. Closes nicely, has a really good shape, and then we can try the hat onto our doll. Today, my model is my new custom icy doll made by my friend Marina, who goes by Dollhouse Guard on Instagram. And I think she's the perfect model. Doesn't match exactly, but we're chasing the daylight, but it's okay. She's cute enough to make up for the mismatchedness of it. But here's the final product of what our hat looks like. I hope that all of you enjoyed the accompanying video with the directions of the sew along. Here's the vinyl view of our handmade hat. I would love to see the hats you made, whether you share them with me on Instagram and use the hashtag blind sew along, or you post them in our Facebook group. Thank you so much for watching and for your participation in the sew along, and I hope to see you next time. Have a good week, everyone. Take care. Bye.